Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kucher Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, we're in Mississippi for a coin show. And in this video, we're going to be talking about something that's not positive, but rather negative. Don't do this if you want to be a successful coin dealer, but let's get this video started. So let me set the stage for you guys, all right? So about a year and a half ago, we went to the Dalton Coin Show. And we met a few people on Facebook, on Instagram here and there. And we like to meet people there. We like to bring people um, and talk with them. And there was somebody that was new to the space, well, kind of not new to the space, but he was getting a lot of learning uh, done. His name was Michael. Michael's a good guy, has a kid. Uh, we came to his house, did a lot of cool stuff. Uh, high relief peace dollars were huge at the time. And, uh, and so he was asking me about certain coins at the show and picking them up and getting my professional opinion in real time. And so we picked up this 1921 piece dollar. I don't know if it was an ICG or an annex or it was in like a basement grading com company holder. I think it was in a basement grading company holder. And uh, he was like, hey, what's your honest opinion? He says it's mint state 60 this and that. And I'm like, I flip over the coin. There's a huge gouge out of the coin, huge scratch. And so I'm in front of the dealer, I'm with him, and I go, I personally would wait for a better coin. I wouldn't get this coin. Just because there's a large scratch on the holder, I, I don't think that PCGS or NGC, the reputable people would, would take it, and I don't think it would increase in, in value. So fast forward, that all happened. He didn't get the coin. We're at Mississippi today, and evidently I ran into the same dealer that he, uh, we, were, we were talking with about the coin, and he basically, I came up to his table and he said, I want nothing to do with you. I want, uh, please leave my table, I, want to, I will sell you nothing. And I'm like, okay, so what's the problem? Like, I, I wanna talk about it, I'm, I'm not that guy. I don't walk off and go, well, someone's talking rude about me, this and that. I wanna address the problem, right? And so he said, oh, you know, you talked to a rude about my coins once, and I'm never going to sell you anything. And I'm like, are you confusing me with someone else? Like, I normally don't talk rude about anybody's coins. Like, I'm not gonna say like, you know, I'm not gonna say something rude about somebody, about their character, about their choice. I'm just gonna say this coin isn't for me because of these things. And that's something that we all do, right? If you go on our website right now, you would say, oh, the luster's not nice enough. Oh, it has haze on this coin. Oh, this, that grade doesn't really excite me. We all have preferences, we all have things we don't, like about coins and things we like about coins and that triggers a purchase so he basically said i can't work with him i can't buy any coins from him i really can't even talk to him or correct the issue because i talked bad about his coins one time and literally what talking bad about someone's coin is is just telling them there's an imperfection and there's a difference of opinion in, in price and in grade and that ultimately didn't lead to a deal so if you want to be a successful coin dealer, if you want to continue in the space, you're going to have to take the chip off your shoulder. You're going to have to say to yourself, you know what, not everyone's going to like my coin. Uh, people are going to have things to say about certain things. They either don't like the toning. They don't like uh, just how the coin looks overall. That's totally fine with me. I'm going to find someone else that likes that coin. And so I just stood there in shock. I didn't know what to say. I don't, I don't know what to do about it. All I can do is be me. So if you guys wanted a tip from me today, don't do what he did and be yourself. Unequivocally be yourself. Tell someone what you feel about a coin, tell them why you don't like it, and let, let the good times roll. And so let's talk about some coins. Let's show you guys some pieces that we got. And uh, you know, I think you guys will enjoy it. And I hope this was a lesson for all of you out there. Um, just keep enjoying the space and being positive about it. Me home wanted to show you guys some coins like I said uh, this is from the first day of the show this is from the second day of the show a little bit a few of uh, more expensive and impressive coins also a few raw ones that we're going to be showing off in next video but just to let you know all the coins that we have in this video and the next video will be uploaded as soon as this one goes live so you guys can take a look at everything on there the first coin that we want to show you guys is just a few old holder coins 1952 uh, proof Washington quarter I really just want to pick these up is because they're extremely cheap and affordable and uh, I've been trying to get a few more old holders in the shop. 
people have been asking them, uh, you know, asking me a lot about these and uh, finally be able to pick up a few of them. Nice 1921 Morgan MS64. A few kind of spots on it, but, you know, that's just what's to be expected with these coins. Mass produced and uh, not the best taken care of. One of my favorite pickups of the whole entire uh, first day was this 1800 Drape Bus Dollar. Nice original cameo look on the obverse here. A few kind of little subtle randings, but that's what you, really what's to expect on these coins. Enjoy this coin a lot. Uh, a little bit of a little cleany look to the reverse, but nothing that won't pass at a grading service. Uh, this one was graded by Annex Fine 15, but uh, I do think it would have a chance at other grading services also. Few other older older holder stuff here. 1954 Franklin in an old green holder with a CAC sticker. I guess someone thought this would maybe get a gold CAC, but I do see a lot of kind of just things in the fields and on the face that really hold it back from a 64. It's just a nice nice coin, but it's really beaten up. Luster's still intact on the coin though. And uh, yeah, it's just an interesting little piece for sure. Got another 44S walker for the shop. The reason why I got this one is because it was just nice blast white. Not too many problems with it. Most of the time on 44S where you're going to see problems is the strike. You know, just a little bit of a weakness in the leg there, as you can see. But the fields are really clean, really nice. Something that I would definitely think about saying to CAC, but probably not this go around. Maybe just leave it on the website, but uh, still pretty beautiful piece. Another coin that we ended up picking up here was this trade dollar. It's a little bit lackluster. It's a 61 grade, but it is still mint state. Still nice looking coin. Uh, nothing to go wrong with this piece at all. You know, nice problem-free surfaces, but like I said, most of the time when you get mint state 62, mint state 61, a lot of it boils down just to the luster of the coin. And uh, this luster is not too nice, but we did get it for an affordable price. And uh, I do think someone will enjoy it for their collection, possibly. Here's a little bit of a, you know, a little mercury dime here. 1942S, great MS66, and was cacked also. I think the dealer that ended up sending a lot of these in were just thinking that it had a shot at a CAC, at a gold CAC sticker. This one though, uh, didn't meet the mark, but still, uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. We've all been there, got, done that, and uh, got the t-shirt. A pretty little uh, Walking Liberty half, MS64 CAC. Uh, kind of a distracting little spot there, probably what held it back from a gold CAC, but uh, can't beat that rattler noise. I do like that a lot actually bought a rattler this week that you guys are going to see a little bit later and uh, yeah it's got a new kind of gold piece to the collection but here is a 1904 Indian head scent this one is graded MS65 red by NGC really nice strong color there as you can see in the just in the fields uh, just a nice fiery ember look to it and uh, yeah it's one of the first pickups of the show I just saw it and, um, you know, buying Indian head scents that are a little bit of a better grade and better condition and have some decent eye appeal really can, uh, you know, really can strike a chord with a lot of Indian guys. And this one's Gem State and really the best kind of color combination that you want. Just a solid red coin. A few Blast White commemoratives here. This is a 1935 Connecticut. Uh, really interesting tree here, as you can see. Um, just a beautiful oak tree, but... Like like this design a lot. We ended up buying a few of these just because uh, the guy ran into like a whole hundred hundred uh, hundred set at his shop, and he said I was just trying to get rid of them. Do a lot of bullion and some coins, and these ones were the ones that were left. And you want to take a look? And of course, my answer was yes. It's just uh, coins with decent eye appeal, nice strong luster on the coins, also, and uh, you know you can't go wrong with a beautiful Bay Ridge like that. Here's an interesting Roanoke also. This one, uh, you know, it's it's got a little bit of a spot here, as you can see, right, right in his, uh, right in his shirt, and right behind his head there. But been buying a lot of these just because uh, we've had a few clients that have been saying, "Hey, can you set some back for us? Can you look for certain ones?" And if you guys want that same treatment, also, just let us know. But as you can see, you know, before I show you the rest of the coins, a few of them from the mail call, uh, as you can see, every coin is different. Every coin is unique. Every coin is, has its own interest. Um, you know, we have original coins, we have a little bit of darker coins, blast white coins, old holder coins, cacked coins, commemoratives, Indians, walkers, morgans, 
All of it's different. All of it has its uniqueness. All of it has its place in the space. And I don't discount anyone for not liking one coin over the other. And also, uh, when we were talking with our buddy at the show and asking for his opinion, he said, it almost looked like you were taking bread off of, or taking food from, uh, you know, that guy, that dealer's table, from his family, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's just, it's a hard thing to kind of understand because when I'm asked about a coin and, it, and the opinion of that coin, I'm always going to try to be honest and try to be upfront with what I think about it. And in that case, I felt like the guy that I was trying to talk with and be nice to, and he was asking for my opinion, I was only giving him uh, my professional opinion. At the end of the day, I didn't want his family to suffer for a price that would hurt him or a coin that wouldn't be good for his collection or his inventory. And so I can't uh, apologize for something like that. But let's show you guys a few more coins here before we wrap up today's video. This is a 1941S Walking Liberty Half. The reason why I bought this one is because it's in a nice old NGC holder with a green label. And also it's a really tougher, it's a tough date. You know, a 1941S with pretty luster. Um, you know, a lot of these can go in, in a pretty expensive territory. I think this one's in the $500 range. And uh, a lot of the 40s are going to be pretty uh, easy to come by. You know, $100 coins, $125 coins, just depending on the label and... That one I've been trying to buy because it's just a little bit of a tougher date. You're, if you're looking for a short set coin, like like this one right here, um, it's just easier to come by and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on it. But here's a 1936 Cleveland. Bought this one because it was an A and A holder, and the coin overall is nice in appearance. And the A and A is just the Gen One of uh, you know the Gen One. There's the A and A holder, and then they ended up getting rid of these holders and uh, selling their company and. I think what happened was ANX then took over and used these labels, uh, not use the labels, but use the holders later on. And so uh, I like this coin just because of the luster, but there's also a lot of ANA collectors out there. And uh, don't mind buying these once in a while when I can move them quick. Um, but yeah, it's still a nice, pretty coin. Here's a, a nice toner that we bought at the show. This is 1886 Morgan Dollar, great MS63 Star by NGC. I really like the crescent that this coin has going all the way, you know, from the chin, even all the way up to the top of the forehead here in the stars. Just a nice array of color, very strong luster. This one was graded in State 63 by NGC. Just a lot of hits there in the in the face, as you can tell, and that's what really held it back. Reverse is nice, though. Pretty clean, especially for, you know, a mid-tier type of Morgan dollar, um, but very, very beautiful. And last but not least, I want to show you guys one of my favorite coins of this week. Bought another gold piece in a rattler. Had to pay up for it, but that's just the way it goes. 1855 gold dollar. That's a type 2. It's great AU55, like I said, and it is CAC approved. Uh, nice little color to the coin. And I've been buying these older holders because, I don't know, I have an affinity to them, and I think they'll go up in value over time. I just think there's a lot of collectors getting into the space that want beautifully, uh, you know, beautiful coins that are also in our rattler holders. And uh, yeah, we'll make, make a nice place in the collection for a little while before working on something else. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's run to the conclusion and the outro. So like I said, guys, there's a lot of value. There's a lot of understanding that you should have in this video for just the common business ethics of coin collecting, coin dealing. I think there's, um, you know, there's just something to be said about what you like and what I like and how that's different and uh, how we should react if someone doesn't like our coins because at the end of the day we all want people to be, be uh, you know involved and feel important and we also just want the community to thrive together and so when you have people that do stuff like this it really does put a you know put a nail in people's you know it just really doesn't make them happy doesn't make them uh, feel good in the space for me I just shrugged it off it wasn't really a big thing for me uh, I'm used to people saying things, people doing things, and that's just the way it goes. But uh, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We hope you guys learned something. If you guys did, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts down below the situation and also of the coins. And uh, subscribe if you're new because new videos every single week. And we want to talk about coins. We also want to talk more about business ethics and just things that really get you excited about the space. So we'll see you guys in the next video.